America's in trouble. I was looking at some of the, the comments on my uh, Fragile America video, and let's just go ahead and cut the crap. Y'all act like everyone is industrious, hardworking, being taken advantage of by the man. 25 states are killing the additional unemployment boost by the federal government because people don't want to go to work. Right now, virtually every fast food place, every hospitality place is struggling to find staff because people, thanks to daddy government, are staying home. And these governors are like, hey, we're going to cut this money because essentially these people don't want to work. This is something that I um, predicted long before, you know, in my early live streams about the pandemic, that people were going to clown. Let's go ahead and have this conversation. Why is America in trouble? The American spirit, the American industrial way is in many folks, that light has been extinguished. It's no longer shining. We're in the get over economy. You know, th this is funny. This is a little different. Someone was saying that my experiences in Atlanta were so much different because Atlanta is home to scammers, right? And the person in LA and lots of California is a better market. Where do the Crips come from, LA? California? Where do the Bloods come from? California? Where do these Asian gangs come from that are so fierce that the, the Alphabet Boys, FBI, they don't mess with them. These games are so massively hostile that folks don't mess with them. They come from California. So this whole notion that Atlanta's the home of the scammers and there's nothing going on, I, I, I fully don't believe that. I don't believe that. And also, one of the things that I've been doing, once again, uh, I'm going to create a coupon code and I'm going to put it in the comment section of this video. And you'll have four hours after the video post to get your 50% discount on the corporate papers, which will teach you how to start a business legitimately. And the link will be below. One of the things that is getting me as I go through this, because um, I I had to send out another demand letter. I got like, someone who's ignoring me who has my property. Unfortunately, this car doesn't have the GPS kill switch. When I get it back, it will have the GPS kill switch on it. Because what I have seen is that people will take advantage at any twist and turn because tomorrow I will be calling the police. And fortunately, I now have nine cars out of my 24 with GPS kill switches. That Mercedes right there, got a GP. I got a lot of folks who's like, who are trying to, th th this is funny. I got a lot of folks who are trying to rent direct. They're trying to go around. I was like, I don't have commercial insurance. I cannot rent that car to you. I technically, if I was a scammer, because that car has full coverage, I could just say my boy was driving it when it was wrecked and I can rent that out if I wanted to. But that kind of behavior, and let's talk about it, catches up with you. And this is why when that girl flattened the tires and you know, she had a week long rental and I did not activate that rental as much as I wanted to because that chick owed me money, I left it alone because that type of behavior catches up with you. You know why it catches up with you? Because it becomes a habit. And when something becomes a habit, it becomes more than a compulsion. It becomes something that you automatically do. And this is why I'm not going to slide down that slippery slope because yeah, I could rent out that Mercedes on Craigslist and what I will have is I would get someone who would rent, wreck the car and they go to the police and they would tell the police that they were renting the car and that would be on the police report. 
I guarantee you, that's what would happen if I was so foolish to do that. But let's go ahead and talk about, because part of the corporate papers, uh, you know, like for the corporate toolbox people in the art of holding, give me and my assistant a week to add you because essentially everyone's going to be added. I'm not going to, you know, I'm going to like, if you paid in full, you're going to be first. You're going to be the first person that's going to be added to the corporate papers. And then we will add the art of holding. Give us a week or two to get everyone added. And uh, the first video went up today and I'm going to be having a lot of conversations and a lot of training about being mentally tough. Because going back to my fragile America video. You want to know why immigrants are kicking Native Americans butts? All right, here's the thing with immigrants. You know why immigrants will get in a boat from Cuba and damn near die to get here? It is easier to be successful in America than anywhere else on the planet. If you're exceptional in Cuba, Puerto Rico, uh, the Caribbean, you have to be exceptional to be successful in those economies. You cannot be average. You have to be exceptional in some of these economies. If your family don't have a business, you don't have a job. And for the people whose families have built a bigger business where they can hire people in addition to the family, that's rare. That's rare. So these immigrants are built of tougher stuff than the fragile Americans. Where they are, you got to struggle just to live. In many parts of the water in the world, clean water is an issue. You know, here in America, you turn on your tap water and you got clean water just like that. In many parts of the world, this is what constitutes getting clean water. First of all, they got to load up their jugs on their on their shoulders, walk down to the river, go to the clean section, dip the jugs in that water, and then haul it back to the house. And they got to do this every day, seven days a week, 365 days a year to just have water. With here in America, all you got to do is go in the kitchen and turn the tap. We have it so good here, but right now, due to fragile America, due to a number of people who are so comfortable, so fat and fancy that they don't actually realize how good they have it. They have no clue to how good they have it. They have no understanding to how good they have it. And essentially, because I, I did a video talking about this girl who was an airline pilot, six figure a year job. I'm sorry, if you're driving one of those big commercial jets, the jumbo, the air, the, the, the buses, the air buses, the people hauler, you're making six figures. She quit it because she had to work too much. When I started working in the hospital, I understood that I would be working weekends. I would be working holidays. I knew that from the first day I took the job. You got people who know this stuff. She knew what being an airline pilot was before she took the job. She knew. And she quit because she had to work too much. She was away from her husband too much. Once again, the people who work in hospitals, our police officers, our firefighters, our paramedics, these are everyday heroes who are working seven days a week, who work thankless jobs, who deal with the public, and they're not as appreciated as they should be because if we didn't have these people working those jobs, our society would collapse. We need someone to Work in the warehouse. We need someone to say, what's your order? May you want fries with that? We need, we need people to do these jobs. And everyone 
has this fantasy that there can be a boss. I'm, I'm about to say something real deep here in a minute. If you were boss material, you would A, be working on it, or two, or B, be there. Just because you wake up on Instagram and you take some fancy pictures and you, you that don't make you a boss. Most people, because they are mentally weak, give up at the first sign of hardship. Give up. I'm out. I'm taking my ball. I'm going home. I ain't playing this game no more. Mentally weak. Mentally weak. And right now, we have many businesses that are struggling to get employees. And many of you are like, well, if they would pay better and if they would treat their, their people better. All right. As someone who has had crappy jobs in life, pouring hot tar on the roof as we, you know, my job was to maneuver the tar and another dude's job was to put the gravel and it was like 103, 104 today. That was hard physical work. But I don't remember anyone talking down to me. I don't remember anyone disrespecting me. I don't remember anyone mistreating me. I do remember the work was hard. It was back breaking work. But I wasn't disrespected or mistreated. And I feel... Once again, I'm speaking from a lofty position as someone who has not had a job in 22 going on 23 years. I've not had a job, so I don't really know what y'all are going through. And I say that y'all, because I ain't part of the employee clique. I don't know nothing about that. I don't know nothing about them waters, boy. I don't know nothing about it because I ain't doing it. But when I was an employee, I remember being respected, treated well, and being paid what they told me they were going to pay me. That's what I remember. And right now, you have a bunch of people who want to be treated special. They want, they, they don't want to prepare themselves for tech work. If you become a tech worker, you can have unlimited vacation. You can have work, remote work. You can work from home and you can have a higher than average salary. But you got to qualify for those tech jobs. You got to take math and science and computer science and computer engineering. You got to take all that. And this is why the HBV1 visa is such a hot commodity because Americans are not choosing to take those subjects in college. They're like, eh, miss me with that. I don't want to take that. I'm going to take basket weaving 101. I'm going to take sports management. I'm going to take nutrition. They're going to take some soft, cushy, easy to obtain degree versus going for a dual E, electrical engineering. That degree, you come out of school, you're making like 90K. But you got to have math, you got to have science, you got to have a rigorous curriculum. And there are many of these jobs available, but we don't have people who are qualified for these jobs. I have a friend who owns an engineering firm, and he has been complaining about new engineers for years. Because when he started his firm, he started it, dude's about 60. And the engineers they were getting were better equipped. And he was like, man, they, they come out of this school, they can't do nothing. They can't think, they can't critically think. I mean, he's really, really frustrated. And it, these are these jobs where he started people off at 75 to 90K. 75, basic, 75, you know, you're 22 years old, you walk in there, you're getting 75K. And he's struggling to get qualified applicants for 75, 90K. They don't work weekends. They don't work holidays. Full benefits package. But to get that job, you got to be qualified. And this is where, you know, many of you and me, we 
part ways. Many of you feel that if you go to work a job somewhere, that you should have a living sustainable wage, 15, 20 bucks an hour, whatever that may be, regardless of the job, regardless of, I think that is some hockey pocky. I'm like, how much effort does it take you? Hello, sir. Welcome to McDonald's. Would you, would you, would you like fries with your order? How, that's not a high skill set. That's a job a monkey could do. Ooh, 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 doo -doo. Sinbad. He talked about it years ago that they don't have the words on the, they have pictures. It's like, oh, Big Mac, picture of a Big Mac. Fries, picture of a fries. Combo, picture of a combo. It is dumb simple to work at McDonald's. It is dumb simple to work at a fast food restaurant. Now, because the workload, going back to me pouring hot tar on that roof, it can be strenuous because you can be really, really busy. But it ain't back-breaking work. It's not. I've never worked in a restaurant. I don't know what it's like. So I'm speaking noise right now because I really don't know. But I cannot see working in a restaurant being harder than pouring hot tar. And let, let me explain to you what we had to do. First of all, the roof was like five stories. So we had to climb up a ladder to get to the fifth story. And it was a rickety little ladder. I was like, don't look down. Don't look down because your heart will freeze. So you get up there, you climb up the ladder. Then the ladder didn't go all the way up to where you had to like literally low crawl on the roof off the ladder. And that's how you had to go down to use the bathroom. Then they had this machine that was conveyor belt that was bringing the tar up on the roof. And then the tar went into this heating thing. And then from the heater, I took it from a wheelbarrow and then I went and poured the tar and another guy had a rake. He was spreading the tar. And another guy was spreading the gravel on the tar. We did that for eight hours a day. 103 degrees wet. You cannot tell me working in air conditioning with a bathroom literally on the corner is hard as doing that. I think I lost about 12 pounds that week. It was physically exhausting work. It was not rocket science hard. I wasn't mistreated. No one talked to me. No one called me boy. I wasn't mistreated. It was just hard work. It was just hard work. And that's where we run into a problem with a lot of America. A lot of America ain't trying to work hard. And you're listening to these fake ass YouTubers who are like, you can start affiliate marketing. It's easy. You can make $4,000 a month just like me. Even though you don't have my YouTube channel, you don't have my TikTok, you don't have my, my um, what is it, Pinterest page. See, this is one of the biggest lies that they tell you that you can do affiliate marketing without a traffic source. You don't believe me? Go listen. Go put in affiliate marketing Watch all of the fake YouTubers tell you that you can do it. You can do it. It's so easy. And then try it based on their advice and get back to me and see how much money you make. See how much money you make. You're going to make a big fat zero in income. That's what you're going to make. Because once again, I'm going to say it, these videos are not designed to help you. Car BNB. He put up a lot of real Toro game. Channel went nowhere. And that's another thing that I feel with Fragile America. That people are at every twist and turn are avoiding hardship. As I'm sitting here talking about the car business. Like, once again, this happened today. I had a car. The, the CV joint broke and the car needs to be towed. I call a torch a tow truck, they didn't show up. So 
this is one of the things that I have to deal with. Just another little problem. Another little problem. Because now tomorrow I got to call another tow company. And because essentially the issue we had was they wanted me to be there. Now, I don't know if you've ever been waiting for a tow truck, but typically they don't show up in 30 minutes. They can show up hours later. And I was like, hey, just call me when you're on the way. I never got a phone call, nothing. I'm never gonna call this tow company again because that car is still sitting where it's sitting and I need it towed. So I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna call another tow company tomorrow and work on that tomorrow. This is one of the things that, you know, uh, cause many people's like, um, I just told you something that you have not seen in one YouTube video about the car rental business. You've not seen that. And this is why I keep saying that people are leaving stuff out. I only have 24 cars. I hear there are people with 34, 50, 100 cars. There ain't no way that they're not going through this. You want to know why? One, unless you have 100 brand new cars, you've got maintenance issues. There ain't no way around it. Cars break. There ain't no way around it. So this is why I keep saying people are leaving stuff out. And like, I just told you something that you will not see on any YouTube video or you can call a tow company and the tow company never shows up. I'll also tell you something else. A stolen car depreciates really quickly. I have a car that I was going to trade in because it had some issues and we were almost home until I told the guy that the car was stolen. He was like, oh, once that hits that car fax, they're hard to sell. People just stay away. I was like, Ugh! why did I even mention that? Why did I even mention that? Because essentially when we buy these cars from the dealers and we sign that paper buying as is, we're buying as is. What means if you drive that car around the corner and it breaks, that's your problem. So I'm getting it fixed. I wasn't, I wasn't going to get it fixed, but I'm going to get it fixed because I'm stuck with it. You ain't seen no one here on YouTube talk about stolen cars, the depreciate. You ain't seen none of that because they're not trying to tell you the truth. They're not trying to tell you the truth. So we have that situation going on. And today is Monday and it's been a pretty good day. Uh, essentially, I have one, two cars in the shop. I have two cars here, so four cars. Actually, five cars. So 19 of my cars are rented. 19. This is a good week. And once again, I got to get into fleet management. I got some people who are a few hours late. Typically, I don't start bugging them hard until we hit the 24, you know, the 24-hour mark. And all of my all of my newer inventory has GPS kill switches on it. So uh, I will do the GPS kill switch story. It's just, I really felt this was, you know, cause I had some people, it's like, man, I was a fan of yours, but you know, you just talking down to people. Why is the average person average? Have you ever asked yourself that? Why is the average person average? Because if you're born in America, you are seduced by comfort. Like with cars, and like I'm gonna do a whole video about this. Like I get, I see it all day long. Now I will say, if I had the my own insurance, and I was um, renting cars, like I could rent, um, I can rent cars. Hold on a second. I mean, you know, it is really interesting because if you are an entrepreneur, a real entrepreneur, you really want to take action. You understand that when you start a business, that it's not going to happen all at once. It's simply not. And many of these fake YouTubers are encouraging you to start these businesses without with, with leaving out the dirty little details of starting a business. Whereas I'm showing you right now, the car rental business is kind of crappy because I'm having um, stolen cars, people keeping my cars. 
And in August, that's not going to happen because I'm going to have GPS kill switches on everything. Because essentially, what I've come to understand is, um, and this is something that someone told me. He said, dude, do you understand this is the nicest car that some of these people have ever driven in their life? And, you know, he says, you are pissing on their dreams by taking that car back. Uh, like, like, hear me out, hear me out. He said, I understand they ain't paying you, but they see it as a personal affront for you to dehorse them from this car that they've grown attached to. And when, you know, he put it to me like that, I started to see it because I don't have these problems with the Camrys or the Acras. When they're done with them, they just bring them back. But the BMWs, and when he said, for some of these people, this is the nicest car they've ever been in. That resonated with me because I got a lot of folks who are trying to get that Mercedes. I've had many offers like, look, I'll do you, I'll give you this. And I was like, look, I'm not set up for that yet. But this lets me tell, this lets me know the future is incredibly bright because right now I got to learn this business. And, you know, many of you are like talk to this person, talk to this person, take this person's course. And everyone that you've mentioned in the comment, I've gone ahead and I've examined them from a seasoned entrepreneur's eyes, not a, hey, he's driving a Lambo on Instagram. That don't mean shit to me. I don't really give a damn. If I want a Lambo, there would be one in the garage. I don't give a damn about someone driving a Lambo. I don't care. I don't give a damn about someone driving, living in a nice house. I drive a Porsche, a BMW, and I live in a million dollar house. That stuff doesn't impress me. So I can look behind the facade and see the real business skills. And the majority of these guys have no real business skills because they don't have their own commercial insurance. They don't have their own websites. I keep saying that. that they don't have that. And that tells me a lot about where they are. And I really don't want to learn from them. Now, if you can point me to someone who has a fully high functioning website where you can go rent cars, check out your cars, make payments, Please direct me to that person because I have not seen that with anybody y'all y'all mentioned. And also, I don't really see a hundred cars as being big time and doing it big. Uh, my, my goal is to have a hundred cars next August. We're not in this August, so I'm giving myself a little bit of time because, you know, we're in the, the, the beginning stages. You know, I'm still learning this business. Like I learned a serious lesson with these GPS kill switches. I learned a serious lesson with these GPS kill switches. I never thought that someone would rent a car for me and then sell it. That never that blows my mind. That I never thought that someone would do that. And that happened. And I never thought that someone would rent my car for someone else, a single mama. I never thought someone would rent my car and literally trash it. But now these things have happened. They're in the record books. I know that they can happen. So what I'm doing is putting policies and procedures in place to prevent this from happening in the future. Because like I said, I, I got three nice vehicles out that don't have GPS kill switches. And two of them actually, one, two, three, I actually have four. And one girl, I, I think she's in love with it. She rents at three days of the time. She has a credit card. And um, so as you know, we get to August, I'm going to have GPS kill switches on all my nice inventory and all my newer inventory. Because like I said, um, I bought a BMW. I spent a lot of money for it. It was almost, it was 18,000, right? And I, I said I wasn't going to do anymore. You know, that was fear and that was mental weakness talking because essentially I bought that car on Thursday, had the GPS kill switch installed on it Friday and it rented Saturday. And I have a feeling it's going to be a heavy hitter. It's going to be a heavy hitter. And also I will now, because the Mercedes has a GPS kill switch on it, I will rent the Mercedes out on hire car because now if something funky happens and essentially if someone just wants to rent it for a day or two, I'm rejecting that. Um, if someone wants to rent it for three, four, five days. I will accept that. You know, it just depends on what's going on Toro because essentially um, I'm learning a lot. I've learned a lot and I have a lot more to learn. 
a lot more to learn because essentially uh, my car on Toro, I have a 12 hour window where you just can't like, you know, I would hate for someone to rent a car at 7 p.m. and then want to pick it up that night. I'm not doing that. I am not going to go through those generations and I, I'm, I'm not doing that. So I have a 12 hour window for a reason. I have a 12 hour window for a good reason. So it gives me time to prepare the car. And also going forward, I'm probably not going to buy any more cheap cars because the car that needs to be towed was a cheap car. And I'm just looking at it like I can't even get a tow truck on the Monday. I didn't even try to get a tow truck on the weekends because, I mean, they don't want to work. It's like, you know, it's like it's the weekend. I'm on call. I really don't want to work, but I'm on call. I didn't even try it. And I, today is Monday and I called the tow company and they never showed up. And I'm never calling them again. I'm not even going to call them out and cuss them tomorrow because essentially, um, I'm just going to go ahead and find me a tow company tomorrow, get the car towed, uh, pick up the Acura, get it rented, and just go on with my life. But once again, you guys have got to understand that business is a sport for the fit. And if you're not mentally fit, this ain't the sport for you. Because like a lot of people want to be a boss, but you don't have a boss mentality. You know, just like, I'm a boss, you know, we gonna make, I'm a part of the seven figure club. Really? Where are your seven figures at, player? Where are your seven figures? You know, essentially, you have a lot of people who are out here who are perpetrating the fraud because I am showing you the warts, the bad parts, because essentially, when you see this business, you know, like I said, last week I made a turn and, um, you know, I got some more growing pains to do. I got some more things to learn. I got some more things to implement. But yeah, I'm going to buy some more nicer cars. I'm going to put them on a higher car. Um, essentially, I have to be careful because Toro doesn't like for you to have cars on two platforms. And I can understand why, because they want to have 100% availability of your inventory. Remember, the ownership videos how Toro is finessing us. They're really finessing us. They're using our asset, making money, and they're putting a bunch of draconian rules in place. So um, pretty much that car is pretty much exclusively for Toro because typically um, I get better renters. And, you know, like I said, if I get someone who wants to do like a five or six day rental on a higher car, that car would go out that car will go out. But, you know, for two days, because essentially that's how the Porsche was stolen. Someone rented it for two days and boom, it got stolen. But essentially, if you're an entrepreneur and you're willing to do the work, the future is amazing for you. If you're willing to do the work, the future is absolutely amazing. So once again, uh, you can get 50% off the corporate papers. Link is below. It's in the first comment. Whatever um, discount code, that code word will be down there. And you can go ahead and get into the corporate papers and give me some time to get it really, really going because I got a first piece of content. I'm going to do some more content, some more training tomorrow. And essentially... I am managing myself as I learn how to manage this business because uh, I just rented a car out and it was a good day. I had one car return at two car I had, I had three cars returned. I rented out two. One car went to the shop, the stolen car, because I wasn't going to get it fixed, but because it's been stolen and if I, and also it has check engine light on. Also, you should know. If your vehicle has a check engine light on and you try to sell it to Carvana or CarMax, they're going to lowball you. They're going to seriously lowball you. My offer, because uh, the offer I got from Carvana was $1,200 for this car. This car can make me more than $1,200 in a month. So I'm just going to go ahead and spend the money, get it fixed, and just keep pushing, keep pushing, keep pushing, keep pushing, keep pushing, because... I'm going to get to a point where I'm going to wake up one day 
and all my cars are going to be rented. And I'm not going to have any breakdowns. I'm not going to have any issues. And it's just going to be a, a very, very good month, month after month after month after month after month. And then this stuff will happen occasionally because I bought all these used cars and the people who used to own them didn't really take care of them. And that's what I'm experiencing right now. So I know this is part of the, the gauntlet. This is part of it. And once again, you have to be mentally tough to play this game. You cannot be a punk. You can't be a scared little bitch. You can't. You can't. So that's all I got for you guys. Remember, four hours after this video drops, you can get the corporate papers for 50% off the links and the codes and stuff for below.